Trump has been convicted of 34 counts, but what is it really? It was a clerical technicality in his business reporting that got stretched from a misdemeanor that was past the statute of limitations into 34 felonies. How is that even possible? It's not, it's not possible in a just world. So no one is buying this garbage. First, I'm going to say Trump has said he's honored to do this for us, to take this. This is an interesting take, but Graham Allen shared this little clip from his, uh, his talk earlier. And I thought this was very interesting. It's a very sad thing that's happening in our country. And it's a, uh, it's a thing that I'm honored in a way I'm honored. It's not that it's pleasant. It's very bad for family. It's very bad for friends and businesses, but I'm honored to be involved in it because somebody has to do it and I might as well keep going and be the one, but I'm very honored. It's a very, I'm glad it's him and not me, but I do recognize that if it wasn't him, it very easily could be me. I saw this, uh, I saw this clip and we're going to cut to this right away. And it was, um, this is like Ben Shapiro reacting to Jordan Peterson's discussing how people would be if they were in a different time, would you be the good guy or would you be the bad guy or some variation in the middle? But it's very interesting. So I'm going to play this and then we're going to talk about it. It's called, are you a hero? I like that. People read the history of Nazi Germany. They always think they're Schindler. They always think that they're the person who would have saved Anne Frank in the Netherlands. They never read history as a perpetrator. I wouldn't have done that. It's like, did you watch people during the pandemic in Canada? 30% of my neighbors were thrilled that they had the opportunity to inform on their, on the people around them. Thrilled. They would have worn those goddamn masks for the rest of their life if the payoff would have been they could feel moral, morally superior and informed. This is actually a thought experiment that Robert George used to do at Princeton, where he would ask students, now let's say that you were alive during the Civil War. How many of you would have been full-scale abolitionists? And every hand in the room would go up. He'd say, well, that's a lie. That's obviously not true. Everybody likes to think of themselves as the hero in the movie. That's particularly easy when you know the past. The question is, are you the hero in the moment? People read the it's easy when you know the past, but are you a hero in the moment? I really like that. I like that a lot. We talk a lot about this, the hero's journey. And a lot of people, you insert yourself as a protagonist. As he was saying though, would you actually do it? Or is it just a fantasy land thing for you? Cause I know. I know. I don't have to question. I, I don't. I know that I would give up just about everything, just about everything to do what I felt was right for my legacy in the moment because I did. Like I lost the friends. I lost respect. I lost, I lost family. I lost money. I lost gigs. I got suspended without pay and kicked out of my office for weeks because I would not conform to the bullshit that they were oppressing us with. It was a constant theme and I was happy to do it. And I was happy to walk into the foreign neighborhood stores as the only person, as far as I could see without a mask saying no declining when people tell me what to do. No, not going to do that. No, not going to do that. Arguing with people in positions of authority over me, supposedly getting kicked out of doctor's offices for my children. That happened. I did all those things. I have the email that I sent to the heads of my company, to the president of the company and copied everyone where I told them they could stick a rectal swab in their ass every day if they want to, to make them feel better, but they're not going to tell me what to do for my health decisions. I did that every, every part of it. 
So, but the thing that I understand <clears throat> from that clip is a lot of people think they're that person, but they don't actually do any of it when the going gets tough, when the bullshit is right up against you and you lose something to choose what's right. A lot of people fold like cheap suits. That's a hundred percent true. So we have a unique opportunity where the thing that's right is November 5th voting for Donald Trump to give him a chance to unfuck the world a little bit, but it's a bigger swing than any of us can do by ourselves. Honestly, it just is. There's not that much to lose anymore. In 2024, today, the last day of freaking May, we're about to get the glittery balls of pride shoved in our mouths and nobody wants it. It's time to rally all these different factions of non-liberal idiots and just unite behind this man who has been taken all these slings, all these arrows, all these insults, all of this lawfare, character assassination, defamation, all of this crap. And he has stuck to the path to do what's right for the country. He is a billionaire with a supermodel wife. He could be on a private island eating steak every day while his businesses make him millions and billions of dollars and just fade away. And then no one, no one can touch him, but no, he stays right in the middle of the shit, taking all this garbage in his later golden years because it's the right thing to do. So I respect the hell out of it. And I, I am behind him a hundred percent. I'm behind him. Like it's not, it's not even the remotest tiniest thing I posted on, uh, everywhere that I could post yesterday that every day from yesterday, when that sentence went through every day, I'm going to work some way every single day to get Donald Trump elected in November. And I don't care if I don't make a single penny doing that. It's like you got all these dumb dipshit kids spending 200 grand and going in debt for, for a degree. That's a paperweight by the time they get out. And what did it do? What did it help? Barely anything except all that debt. I have dumbed down my life to an insane cheap standard of living. So that the debt that I take on in order to work pro bono towards this Trump election, it won't even be that bad. It won't even be that bad in, in the grand scheme of business expenses. So that's it. I will work with all of my varied and extensive skill sets every day. I'm going to try to get Trump elected every single fucking day as my gigantic colossal go fuck yourself to the deep state establishment that runs everything. And what are they, what are they going to take from me? What else can they take from me? I had the respect of my peers. I had a beautiful family. I made the median income in America. It's like, I could just go on with life and do nothing and everything was great. And I was a little annoyed that Obama destroyed healthcare, but I was making, I was figuring that out and I never really got political. I just kind of kept it aside, kept it aside. And then the freaking 2020 election and the COVID scamdemic came. And they fucking lied about everything. And every time I called out a lie, they insulted my character. They disrespected me. They got my family to hate me. Friends to abandon me. Coworkers to turn on me. The institutions 
came together and lied about all of the health decisions and recommendations. Like, I know this is like off topic, but I am fucking pissed about this whole situation. And I'm just like, it's war. It's absolutely just war, 100%. And now I don't need to get my guns and go nerf anybody, whatever, you know, the verbiage for the Ray apps in the comments. You don't have to deal with that. But I'm going to unbelievably troll them, roast them, expose them, and share as much as I can to as many people as I can in as many forms and platforms as I can. And that's my mission. That's like my mission right now. If you enjoyed this clip from the ThoughtCast, please like, subscribe, comment what you think, and catch us live on Rumble, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. All links down below.